Hello, my name is Jesper Juhl. I'm professor of trombone and brass music at the Royal Danish Academy of Music in Copenhagen, Denmark. Today I will share with you some of my ideas about playing the Grundal Trombone Concerto. Um, I've made two videos on the first movement, one video on the second movement and one video of the third movement. And then I'll make also a short bonus video which is concerning some of the histories behind the concerto. I hope you'll enjoy it. So, um, today, today I will give you a little bit of my thoughts about the Grand Isle Trombone Concerto and what I want to put an emphasis on when I perform it. So, if we, keep, if we have a, a look on the first movement, the first movement, the first thing I would say is the tempo. Grandel, he wanted it to be played in tempo 80. For me, that's on the slow side, but I try to get there. But what is most important, I think, is that we notice that it says motorato assai ma molto maestoso. So we need to play this really majestically. And if we play it too fast, I can't see that we can play it majestically. So, uh, in the first phrase, in the opening of the concerto, um, we played not too, not too fast, and then we play a little bit, and that's a, a theme in the whole movement and also actually in the whole concerto. We have a lot of tenuto lines, and uh, in this concerto, the tenuto lines is an uh, expression of something a little bit more heavy than the rest. So we create a tension and a release, and I think that's very important to the concerto. That comes, for instance, in the end of the opening, where it says... And I've, if I do it even more clear, I will really tongue on this. and try to play as legato as possible on the last bit of it. So, if I do the first part of the Grundel trombone concerto, it'll probably sound a little bit like this. So, on the last four notes, it says Pesante. Actually, in some editions, he, they didn't write the Fortissimo, but that's a misprint. So, it is really Pesante and Fortissimo. And in some editions, also the last of the four notes will be uh, marked uh, staccato. That's also a misprint. It's really a broad, broad one. When I play these four notes, I really try to play them as broad as possible to have a little bit of good sound in that, in that phrase. If you noticed another thing which is important for me is that we have an accent in the bar seven and bar eight and just before that we have some staccato notes and I really try to play them even more staccato than maybe is uh, normal but it gives a better accent just after it's this but so of course i exaggerate a little bit now but that's my idea that we really keep it like this also to keep the maestoso feeling of this another thing which is really important for this concerto 
especially for the first movement, and that's the reason why I really love this movement, is that we have so many different atmospheres. We have this majestic feeling, but we have also some more uh, espressivo passages, and they are not too short, they're not too long, they're really, I think, they are really uh, very well blended into each other. So the second phrase of the Grand Isle Concerto consists actually of quite a few of these different um, atmosphere. The first... <laughs> So the first part of it is really majestically still, only mezzo forte. And um, then we come into this espressivo thing, where I really like to find the singing. And the bar before that, I normally say this is uh, like a chameleon. We really change color, it's here. So I really try to come from the majestic thing into the more espressivo. Just a little bit later, we have a little bit focus on the tenuta lines, especially in the phrase that is descending from the A flat, it's here. So when we play this phrase, we have three notes with the tenuto line on it, and then we have the first time three notes without. Then we have again three notes with tenuto, then we have four notes without. Then we have three notes with tenuto, and we have five notes without. And then we have three notes where he forgot to write the tenuto, but I play it anyway, maybe a little less, and then we have six notes at the end. So it's and what I try to do is that the tenuta line notes, I really try to make them pesante and then to release the weight. So you have 30 kilos on the, on the tenuta lines and you have zero kilos on what is not tenuta like this. And again, we have something without tenuta lines and we have something with tenuta lines. And I try to emphasize a little bit more when we have the tenuta lines. So this is also, again, a very important thing in my eyes of the concerto, um, which is going all the way through, not just in the first, but also in the second and third movement. We have then the next thing in the concerto, it comes from this. So in this part of the concerto, which is yet another kind of atmosphere, in this part we have um, really the chance to play lyrically. And uh, it comes twice in the concerto in the first movement, and the first time is here. And if you notice that it's written here uh, with a crescendo, and then con anima, and then in the second part, of the first movement, when it comes again, there's no crescendo and it's written animato. So I really like to have a difference on these things. So second time I really try to keep it down in volume, just mezzo forte, but I try to p 
push on a little bit. So, but con anima is for me really, really important uh, so that we give our soul to the audience. So that's, that's yet another uh, important thing for me in this first movement. When we finish this part of it, I would go, uh, when we come to the page two on the score, uh, at, at least in the trombone part, uh, there's one thing I would say. When you come to... This part of it, first of all, there are no octavas in this. That's uh, another thing that uh, Grendel, he was furious about. But, so played without octavas, but when you come to the, uh, to the last bar before the climax, I really think that it's an upbeat. All the 16s will be an upbeat to the, the dotted uh, eighth note. Da, da, dee, da, dee, da, da. And I push on a little bit, and I give sometimes just to the climax. So I think that's one of the things that I really try to stress when I play the concerto and also when I teach in the concerto. Uh, then we have again this. So in this passage, as you noticed, I try to stay down, not playing too loud when it's only animato. Uh, after this, when we go into do, da di, di, do, da di, I really try to push it forward and play actually the accents written. In some editions, you will need uh, the, the 16 notes needs an, a dot. It's in the original version and it gives you a better accent on that. So um, when I come to the climax of this, I really, I take my artistically freedom. So I play la da di da di to stress the multidramatico uh, things in this. Uh, da da dim, da da di ya. And I know very well that I may be do the 16s a little bit too fast, but I think it really underlines the dramatic atmosphere in this passage. So uh, feel free to do so. Um, then we have the ending of the first movement, which in my world is exactly the same as the beginning. So it needs to be majestically, but uh, then we have also a thing with, with tenuto lines, but in another way. So we have... When we play this bit, just the very ending of the first movement, I try to put in some slurs, which actually makes it roll a little bit better. Uh, so I do. So the big uh, intervals in this phrase, I actually slur them down. Um, it, it just gives a good continuity through the phrase. And then I really like to put it actually to, to slow it very much down. So you might think, what is coming up next, and then I, I add the last dum bum bum. That last bit is really hard to play. Actually, it's the hardest thing in the whole movement. 
What I think of this last bit is I play da ka, da dum. So I, I, I think like two notes at the time, da ka, da dum, da ka, da dum, da ka, da dum, bum, bum, and then the last things will be pretty easy. You obviously have tried to practice this in a bunch of different ways, but this thinking da ka, da dum, is really a thing that works for me, then it becomes less difficult. So this is some of my ideas about the first movement of the Grand Al Concerto. I hope you enjoy the concerto just as much as I do. I really love the concerto and uh, I'm extremely proud to be Danish and be aware that a Danish concerto is one of the most played concertos all over the world. Good luck with that. <laughs>